All right, I wanted to make a quick video for those DIYers out there that are thinking of installing a solar system and putting in a grow watt. And I have the Life Power 4 EG4 LL batteries, which we'll go into more detail. Lithium batteries. These are, uh, like I said, uh, each one is a grow watt. They are the SPF 3000. LVM, I believe, LVM ESs. They are 48 volt systems. They operate on 120 to 240 volts, which is kind of nice. Uh, the system, the solar panels that I have in place, are bringing in continuously about 100 and uh, anywhere from 130 volts to 175, 180 volts on on a good day. Uh, I am gonna increase the the volts on my panels when spring comes around it's winter where we're at <clears throat> uh, overall really like the system uh, one of the complaints obviously on grow watts is the noisy fans you know when they're running right now they are running they're amping up these are hybrid units I do have them connected to the uh, power supply the main grid of the house today the last three days literally we haven't had uh, much Sun so right now they're actually charging from the grid to the batteries at uh, 20 amps this one's charging at 20 amps to the batteries right now coming from grid yeah I know uh, that's not the whole idea of having a solar but up till now they've actually been working seamlessly once I got them configured correctly um, and it also works seamlessly when connected to the power grid so when you have it configured it will automatically jump from solar to grid power when necessary if you have it configured correctly that's a whole different video a whole different conversation on configuring these two to run in uh, in series you can run six of these girl watts in series makes them even more beautiful I mean you can really string a lot of power together imagine 3000 times six you're talking <clears throat> uh, a lot of uh, amps and and volts if one a lot of power anyways so that's a whole different video so I run in from outside uh, have a uh, solar panel system out there there's 24 panels feeding in of course my paddles are 48 uh, volt panels they are 315 watt panels I can do the math on that one uh, so they feed in here I come into a DC breaker box on and off for PV1 PV2 from there they're basically going up into each of my uh, inverters this is my number one inverter this is my number two inverter when you configure these in the manual, it tells you how to configure those. Maybe I'll make another video and go into detail on how to configure those. But I wanted to give an overall setup of how these work. <clears throat> so obviously you have a AC input coming in from here. Comes in, basically this comes from your grid, from your main panel. I am running a double pull, each on its own single phase. I did have a problem when I set these up originally. I was running from the same pole and obviously that doesn't work so I did have to uh, set each AC in power to each inverter on their own phase I put in a double pole breaker for that I believe it calls for a uh, 50 amp on this side and a 40 amp on the sub panel I don't like to call it a sub panel because really it's its own panel this is my solar panel I call it a main some of us would call it a sub panel I call it a main because literally these inverters are feeding it as a main power source as its own grounding source as its own power source whole different video <clears throat> uh, anyways one thing I'd like to comment on these um, as I said I really like them yeah pretty cheap for the power they can do being hybrid I mean they're ideal for those that are you know have an on-grid system you basically want to plug and play once you get them configured they come with the uh, grow watt uh, USB sticks that basically connect to uh, Grow Watts app on the web so you can monitor everything from regardless of where you're at, how much power you're bringing in, how much you're kicking out, state of charge in your batteries. Uh, another thing you have on here is state of charge on your batteries. <clears throat> it's not real accurate, but it gives you a, a rough idea of where you're at on your state of charges. You thumb through these, so obviously I'm on 120 volt system. It's running 0.3% of this particular inverter. This is the number two inverter on the on the series of systems, running at 54.1 uh, volts. If 
kind of thumb through these. It says my batteries are at 75%. Give you an idea here. <clears throat> well, they are at 75% when you look at the uh, actual light indicators here. There's, there's four of them, so each one of them is roughly 25%. To get a more accurate read, I have to connect the uh, laptop to the RS485 uh, port. That'll give me a real accurate uh, description of where I'm at on the power of each cell in the battery. But this is just an overall video, so uh, we'll keep it more simple. These batteries are awesome. Uh, I'll go back back to here. So coming from the inverter, uh, these are my. This is coming to the AC in. I'm sorry, I'm, I did this wrong. So this is AC in to these um, inverters. I upgraded the cable. I believe it's a uh, eight gauge, eight gauge wire. I did that just because you can see I'm drawing 40. 40 amps. I'm drawing 20 amps on here. I'm drawing 20 amps on there to charge the batteries. <clears throat> you can set that so I could actually draw 40 amps on each one of them. So you're running 80 amps off of those cables. I figured you better increase the uh, the uh, AWG size of those um, cables. My battery cables coming in here. They come into another DC quick disconnect. Um, I have a shunt here. Um, a Vic, uh, Victron uh, battery shunt. I honestly, I don't like that very well. Uh, it's hard to basically get it to um, to sync correctly, and I've screwed around with it quite a bit, and it automatically unsyncs and gives me all kinds of hassles. I personally, you want to see what's going on exactly with the batteries, you're better off connecting uh, to the uh, RS-485 port there, running the application and connecting directly to your battery, see what's going on. <clears throat> One other issue uh, that are with these batteries, you're going to read about them a lot when you're trying to figure out whether you're going to buy these batteries or not. These are lithium batteries. They're some of the latest and greatest. Yeah, they come with the uh, their own battery management systems implemented. They are almost plug and play. Um, I didn't want to trust it at first, so I was monitoring the crap out of those videos or of the, uh, the battery system to see if they'd overheat. You know what would happen when they uh, <clears throat> basically were getting down to the setting where I have it set to actually start recharging themselves. Do they overcharge? The fact that it's on its own bus system here that, you know, <clears throat> basically my mains come in here at the top, you got a bus system. So obviously these ones are closer to the charge and discharge. You know, what happens with these ones? Well, when I'm monitoring these, these batteries actually discharge slower than these ones and charge obviously sequentially so this one charges faster than this one so how does it equalize well the uh, battery management system in these will basically say hey look I'm full and it stops off then this one says okay I'm full and it stops off this one says the same till they go to 100 percent and then basically the whole system stops charging the inverter shut off from sending the battery signal <coughs> excuse me um, so that that part of it works pretty good on these uh, life power force I like that but the communication cable running with these particular lithiums um, there is this setting on here that you know asks you what type of battery you basically have you know how you want to configure it it's got the lithium right on there and it's on number five if we go in here so I have it set on user defined I'll tell you why in a minute you come down here so there's your flooded batteries there's your AGM batteries <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm not sure what this one is but you come back to lithium so you click on that right and it's gonna set up your lithium configurations you can go into a different menu and actually set them manually doesn't work doesn't work with these particular batteries anyways um, maybe you guys can get them to work if you can please share because I fiddle around with a lot and can't get it to work so you get into user defined and you can actually go and uh, configure you know uh, where you want your batteries to cut in cut off and and this works really, really well. So basically, this uh, this uh, Cat5 cable is not doing nothing. I just have to take it out. Uh, as you can see, I created a little bus bar here. Um, I have these grounded. I have my battery systems grounded. I had to make this this door. A little piece of, uh, like, I don't know what type of fiber you call that thing. I had to lay it around and turn it into a door. It worked pretty good. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much my system. Uh, as you can hear, the inverter shut off, and uh, now they're not making as much noise. It says my batteries are topped off at 100%. Can't really believe that, but uh, maybe they are. 
and no they're not just to give you guys an update of how these things are working so if my batteries are topped off it would actually go up to uh, all four of these at 100 percent the inverter is saying 100 percent but what i notice is when the batteries go over the 75 percent charged state of charged i mean 76 percent literally this thing will say 100 percent it's not that it shuts off and if i set this setting in the inverter it'll actually charge them up to 100 percent and shut off from the grid as i have it setting right now it will charge up to 100 percent from the solar system and that is the system that i have these inverters set up to do like i say these inverters are really nice some of the options are how you want it to run you know uh first option for charging solar and uh, first option for using the energy from batteries first there's a lot of settings uh, when you get into them and read the owner's manual. You'll really like it. I really enjoy it. Overall, it's uh, been a really good system. It's worked out the little bugs. Um, bought them from Watts 24-7. Ian, he's a great guy. Gotta put that out there. I know he's really busy in these times. And uh, every time I called or had a question, he was right there. I mean, he may not answer me immediately, but uh, he gets back to you, stands up to his word on everything helped me out when I was in a bind and a pinch and uh, yeah we got this thing up and running really good I am going to rechange these uh, wires here coming from the batteries even though they're 4 gauge um, they're not getting hot but when I've watched this system running 90 amps when it's charging from the solar systems 90 amps coming through from the panels and you've got 45 50 amps going out that's a lot of energy. I sat here and basically was grabbing on the cable all day one day, worrying about them melting, getting hot, you know, short circuit and what else. And uh, they never got hot. <clears throat> but I was talking to uh, Ian, and Ian actually noticed in a video that they were uh, a little thin. So I thought, what the hell, I'm going to just add a you know bigger gauge wire. I got a double out wire I'm going to put in there. And uh, the uh, batteries, <clears throat> they're obviously they're 200 amp batteries. Each one, I got four of them, so you got 800 amps, right? I told you I'm running on a 48 volt system, so I've got, uh, you know, 224 volt or 25.6 volt batteries basically running series to make your 48 volts, right? So I've got two sets of batteries, even though there's four running in series to get 48 volts, so you're running at 400 amps on 48 volts to complement my system. Um, I'm burning through my energy on my batteries because. I have it hooked up to a 240 volt electric heater. If I didn't have that thing run, run into a 240 volt heater, it wouldn't suck the life out of my batteries. Uh, I don't have a big house here. It's in the middle of winter. I mean, you're talking days that are 19 degrees right now outside. So it's sucking the juice right out of those batteries to, to heat the house. Uh, I'm using, you know, a convectional heater and I'm using a fireplace, but just to give you guys an idea on consumption. Um, if you don't have too big of a house, I mean like 1,800 square feet, somewhere around there, and you're not using electric heat and, you know, electric water heaters and, you know, dryers and things like that, burning up tons of electricity, I would say that 1,000 amps um, of these batteries, well, not really 1,000, but uh, 600 amps total at uh, 48 volts would be decent for any household to give you. So that's, uh, that's my system. Um, I'm not an electrical engineer. I am a network engineer. It doesn't really have anything to do with uh, electricity. So I essentially had to read and uh, watch a lot of videos and read and ask a lot of questions. And thankfully, uh, it all came together pretty smoothly. Um, I had planned on hiring some electricians, but uh, in the end, if you just keep reading and keep you know, cranking out, you'll get the experience necessary to uh, implement these systems. I uh, do need to obviously raise the caution, you know, electricity can kill you, so definitely be careful out there, you know, uh, safety is always first, uh, you know, uh, you have to you have to pay attention, you've got to keep, uh, keep your mind on where you're at, you get complacent and uh, you're going to have a heck of a bad day, so enjoy yourselves and um, yeah, I look forward to your comments.